Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show how you can build your own budget PC for only $400. This video is for beginners. I'll walk you guys step by step my equipment and what to do. You can save money and get a sense of accomplishment by building your own budget gaming PC. And I'll also link all the items I use in the description below. So let's get started right away. All right, let's start off with the motherboard and the CPU choice, and let's start off with the CPU choice first of all. And my CPU choice for this budget build is the Ryzen 3 3200G. Now I love the CPU for budget builds as it comes with integrated advanced Radeon Vega 8 graphics. It's great for budget builds, works good for gaming, and it will save you the cost of purchasing a video card. And keep in mind, this is a budget PC build, so you're not expecting super high-end graphics, but the quality for what you get is great. And I'll show you guys some actual Fortnite footage later on. All right, the motherboard that I chose to pair with this Ryzen 3 CPU is the Gigabyte B450. Any AMD Ryzen AM4 motherboard will do, but I love this micro ATX form factor of this motherboard, which makes it suitable for compact builds. There's an onboard DVI-D port, an onboard HDMI port, four DDR4 RAM slots, and two slots for video cards. And Gigabyte motherboards are known for being ultra durable. They are also coming in at a great budget-friendly price. Now, make sure you ground yourself before handling a motherboard. Most of the time, it won't be a problem, but if you are worried, you can purchase an anti-static shock bracelet. Now, let's take out the CPU for now, but be very careful when handling the CPU. Only hold it by its edges and don't touch the gold pins underneath to prevent damage. To install it on the motherboard, unhinge the lever on the motherboard and line up the CPU with the CPU slot on the motherboard. There should be a gold triangle on both the CPU and the motherboard slot to show you the correct direction to place it. Make sure you align the arrow and slowly put the CPU into the motherboard slot. You don't need to apply any pressure. If aligned correctly, it should gently drop into place automatically. Hook the lever back in place and your CPU is installed. Now let's do the RAM next. For the RAM, I went with the Kingston Fury 8GB 3200MHz 2 pieces. A total of 2 sticks for a total of 16GB of RAM. Kingston Fury is a great brand and you can't go wrong. This gives it a perfect balance between price and performance and you always have the opportunity to upgrade more RAM in the future. So the RAM goes in here. You always wanna check your motherboard manual on the slots your RAM should go in. For myself, because I only have two sticks of RAM, they would go in slots two and four to take advantage of dual channel RAM. To install the RAM, just unlock the slots with the clips and line up the notch in the RAM with the notch in the motherboard. Now, the RAM only goes in one direction and you should be able to gently push the RAM down with a little bit of pressure and it will fit in snugly in place. If it doesn't fall in place snugly after you give it a gentle push, you may have the RAM backwards. If done correctly, the RAM should go into the motherboard slot and the clips automatically line up and click. Now let's install the heatsink for the CPU. It should already come with some thermal paste. The heatsink mount is rectangular, so you can really orient it one way. Make sure you're extra careful with this part, otherwise you'll have to pull it out and the thermal paste won't be as effective and you'll need to clean it. Screw into the mount, but don't go all the way in yet. Partially screw it for now so that it's even. Leave a little slack before we fully tighten in it. All right, now let's put the motherboard with the installed CPU and RAM onto the case. The case of my choice for this budget build is the Dark Flash Neo Mid-Tower Computer Case. It has a hinged tempered glass side panel, USB type C port, and a cable management system. And the case just overall looks awesome for a budget build. So let's first move out the side panels in this tool free case. Now that we are on the inside, we're gonna line up the motherboard screw slots with the case. But before we do that, make sure in the back of your case, if you see an IO shield, that you strip off the IO shield first so the back slots can be accessible for when we install the motherboard. The motherboard will come with its own IO shield that we can use after. It's the metal plate thing that looks like this. All right, now that we located the mounting holes for the motherboard, gently line up your motherboard. If you did it correctly, you will see the back inputs from your motherboard slightly protrude out of your case. All right, so now use the screws that are included in your motherboard to secure the board in place. You may also want to use a magnetic screwdriver as sometimes if the screws get loose, it is hard to locate, but that's completely optional and up to you. Now that the motherboard is screwed on, let's install the power supply. For this PC build, I'm gonna go with the Corsair 650 watt power supply. This is an awesome power supply for the price and you get amazing future-proof functionality. If this is your first time installing a power supply, note that you may see tons of cables coming along with the power supply. Please don't let that intimidate you. You're not gonna need to use all the cables right now. Just watch what I do step-by-step. Step. I'll show you what cables you need and how to install the power supply. The key thing is to make sure that the power plug shows up on the outside of the PC case space with the on and off button. This will ensure that you're installing it correctly and also ensuring the fan is facing the dust filter. Make sure you tighten the screws well so the power supply is snug in place as you don't want a loose power supply to cause any damage to your PC. 
Now that the power supply is installed, we are going to install the hard drive. Because this is a budget PC build, I'm going with the Kingston 240GB SATA SSD. This is a standard old school SATA hard drive. You may hear a lot of things like NVMe hard drives that go directly on the motherboard are better and faster. But again, it's not a huge difference in my eyes and that would drive up the cost a lot higher than this budget build. Hard drives are also one of the easiest components to change and upgrade in the future. So don't stress out about it. All right, now watch how I install the hard drive from the PC case and mount everything. You will also need to connect a SATA cable from the power supply to the hard drive. All right, we are almost done. Keep in mind that because this is a budget PC build, we are using integrated video graphics and thus we don't need to have a dedicated video card. All right, just a few final major connections and then we can get this PC up and running. Keep in mind that we are using integrated graphics once again, so we don't need to install a video card. For the case cooling fan, you can pretty much use any budget case cooling fan. I just happen to have a spare one lying around, so I'll use this one. However, I'll leave a link below to one that is pretty similar to mine. It's pretty easy to install and you just want to mount it onto the case like this. Now let's talk about connecting the cables. Here are the main ones. From the power supply, there should be a 24 pin connector that you want to connect to the motherboard. Next up, you want to connect the CPU cables to the correct slot on the motherboard. For our particular motherboard, it goes on just like this. Then you have the audio cables and the front USB-C connector cables. And just like that, we are done. So let's put this case back together. Let's power up this PC and get this bad boy running. Obviously, you will need to pick up a mouse, keyboard, monitor, and operating system. And I did not include those costs in this video. I have some budget recommendations that I will link in the description below if you want to use some of my suggestions. So I installed Windows on this PC, got everything set up, and now I'll load up some popular PC games just so you guys can take a look at the performance. First off, let's take a look at Fortnite. With Fortnite, here are the settings that I'm able to play with using the integrated video card with minimal lag. As you can see, the graphics still look awesome for the budget PC build and I'm able to have lots of fun. Next up, I'll show you guys some gaming performance from Dota. Again, Dota is running perfectly fine and these are the settings that I'm using. Overall, I love this budget PC build. It works great for gaming for like Fortnite, Dota, simple video editing, and it's pretty future-proof as you have the option to upgrade things in the future, like the video card or RAM if you want better performance. Just to summarize the total cost of this build one more time, here is the total damage everything came in at. Building this budget gaming PC was simple, cost-effective, and a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more PC builds from me in the future, help me out by hitting the like button, subscribe, and drop a comment below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.